the Ukrainian military continues to liquidate Russian soldiers. Over the last day, from November 3rd to 4th, Russians lost 1,300 soldiers at the front. In total, since the beginning of the full-scale war, Russia's losses have exceeded 700,000 soldiers, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In total, approximately 700,390 Russian troops have already been killed or wounded in this war. The day before, the defenders shot down 93 Russian operational tactical level drones in the sky. Ukrainian soldiers destroyed 35 enemy artillery systems, 15 armored combat vehicles, 11 tanks, and 1 MLRS of the Russian troops. In addition, Ukrainian fighters destroyed 77 units of motor vehicles and tankers, and 3 units of special equipment. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, the defense forces have also deprived the enemy of 994 air defense systems, shot down 2,629 cruise missiles, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, and sunk 28 ships slash boats and a submarine of the aggressor. As the general staff notes, 169 combat clashes were recorded during the past 24 hours. The number of combat clashes per day in the Kupiansk direction reached 16. The defense forces repelled the attacks of the occupiers in the areas of Golubivka, Sinkivka, Stepova Novoselevka, Kalisnikivka, Berestovo, Zagrizovo, Krugliakivka, Vishnivo, and Pershotrovnivo. In the Lyman direction, our troops stopped nine enemy attacks. The invaders concentrated their main efforts in the areas of the settlements of Grakivka, Turna and Dibrova. The aggressors' aircraft bombarded the areas of Toritsk, Druzba, Petrivka and Dilyivka settlements in the Toritsk direction, and the enemy tried to advance four times in the Toritsk area. 27 attacks, this number over the past day were repelled by our defenders in the Pokrovsky direction. The enemy tried to advance in the vicinity of Myrolubivka, Lasivka, Promeny, Sikoy Yar, Novogradivka, and Vishnevo. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday met North Korean Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui who has been on an official visit to Russia since late last week. State television showed them greeting each other but details of the meeting were not available. Cho started her visit on talks with her Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov last Friday. Their meeting in Moscow came on the heels of the Pentagon statement that North Korea has deployed about 10,000 troops to Russia to fight against Ukraine within the next several weeks. Neither Moscow nor Pyongyang have specified the agenda for Ko's talks in Moscow but in a closed-door hearing at South Korea's parliament, the South Spy Agency said Cho may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what the North would get in return. South Korean and Western officials have voiced concern that Russia may offer technology that could advance the threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missile program. Russia and North Korea signed a strategic partnership agreement earlier this year. The agreement between the North Korea and Russia to send North Korean troops provides for bilateral benefits. In particular, Russia allegedly pledged to pay high salaries to the military, reports the Korean Herald. Korean MP Wee Sung Luk, who was Seoul's ambassador to Russia, said in a commentary to the Korea Herald that joining the war against Ukraine was not a bad deal at all for North Korea. 
According to him, the financial and food crisis in the North Korea are largely resolved thanks to Russian compensation for its contribution to the military effort against Ukraine. According to North Korean intelligence, in exchange for the North Korean military, Russia has pledged to supply 600 to 700,000 tons of rice per year to the North Korea, pay $2,000 salaries to North Korean soldiers involved in the war against Ukraine, and share space technology. Moreover, the countries agreed to involve Russia in combat operations on the Korean peninsula in the event of war. Recently, the world was shocked by the information that North Korea sent thousands of its military personnel to Russia. Ukrainian intelligence reports that their number may reach more than 10,000. The Financial Times noted that some North Korean soldiers are already in the Kursk region of Russia, about 50 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. In response, South Korea announced the possibility of increasing military support for Ukraine. Seoul also emphasized that the North Korea has requested Russian technologies related to tactical nuclear weapons. If North Korean soldiers go into Ukraine, it would be the first time a third country puts boots on the ground in the war. Other countries on both sides of the divide have sent military aid, including weapons and training. Iran has supplied Russia with drones and Western nations have provided Ukraine with modern weapons and financial and humanitarian assistance. The United States say some of those troops have already moved near Ukraine's border in the Kursk region, where Moscow's forces have struggled to push back a Ukrainian incursion. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said at a news conference with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and their South Korean counterparts. Blinken said Russia has been training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench clearing, indicating that they fully intend to use these forces in frontline operations. Ukraine is preparing as though combating North Korea in its territory is inevitable.